How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be changing out the thermostat we have on the wall with this Eco B3 Lite. Um, I'm not going to get too much in details on the different type of Eco B models, but there's plenty of videos out there and information on them. Just know the Eco model is the base model um, and doesn't do certain things like have Alexa built in or Siri or whatever that may be. So we're going to make a quick video of installing this on the King Electric Eco 2S model that we have above here on my right. And Go from there. Should be a quick, super simple install. Um, and I'm looking forward to being able to use this as a way to track not only cycle time within the garage, how often the heater is actually cycling you know, during the uh, year, um, just to track energy consumption, help share with you all you know, what kind of um, power consumption you can expect to see with, with this type of electric heater. Um, also be able to control it remotely if I wanna be able to shut it off or if I would like to um, you know, turn it up to 65 degrees before I come out in the shop here and make sure it's toasty warm on a you know, zero degree day here in Iowa. So with that said, let's go ahead and get this installed on the wall and test it out. When doing this, make sure the power is not onto the device. Um, so really just shut the breaker off to your um, heater in this instance, or if this is a new install, again, just make sure there's no power to it. It is always good if you are replacing an existing unit to take a picture of what you're doing with your smartphone or whatever camera you have. That way you can kind of uh, reference what wires were hooked up where and hopefully avoid some of the issues you would, um, I guess, normally have by, you know, connecting things in the wrong location. I'm gonna go ahead and take the existing one off the wall and we're gonna go ahead and install the Eco B3 here and we're going to give it a shot. Alrighty, now that we got the thermostat installed, let's go ahead and try it out and see how it works. Uh, keep in mind, this was a really quick and simple install. It took less than 30 minutes to do this all. I mean, 15 realistically, um, as long as you can get logged into your Wi-Fi and you have your thermostat wire there. Um, again, take a look at the instructions that comes with the Ecobee if you're using it with this application. It will tell you about the wire requirements and essentially um, using the five wire format gives you the easiest way to convert. Otherwise, you'll have to use the, um, the power I guess converter piece you'll call it inside the kit there. So let's go ahead and try it out and see how this all works. All right, I'll try to get you up close here so you can see what's happening. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it or not. But anyways, on my Ecobee home screen here, you're gonna see I have two Ecobees registered to my device. On top, you'll see the shop and then the one here for the house, which is a different one. Um, you'll see right now that the ambient temperature in the room is 56 degrees and it's using the one built-in sensor here in the shop to show what's going on. Um, up in the left-hand screen here, you'll see that I have it set to 45 degrees, which is the lowest the thermostat will go. So if you go into the actual shop thermostat itself, you'll see this is the home page. Shows you the humidity in the shop, shows you the temperature in the middle, and on the right side shows you the actual um, set temperature in the room. Um, kind of nice to see that there. Uh, also, like if you do the Ecopeat, it shows you the, you know, the, the weather forecast. And you can go in here and set different things. You can turn the fan on, so click on. It will change the thermostat on the wall, and then the fan will begin to cycle. Awesome, right? So likewise, you turn the fan to, um, you go back here and you just cancel. It will cancel um, throughout the fan, as it'll ask you to do, and it shuts the fan off. And then it will continue to load and do its thing. So I've, obviously it canceled the fan out there, and now we'll go into the next piece. Um, again, in the settings here, you can set, if you really want to do like a, you can set a home schedule and a way schedule and go through all that. Um, on the screen here, you can do, I'm um, turn the ecosystem on. So it's gonna basically use the, um, the known utility rates and such like that to help preheat and cool the garage if I want to do that. Um, you know, it talks about community energy savings here, how it can work with the power company to help um, prevent issues and decrease your energy consumption. Um, also within this, you can set the fans around your heater every so many minutes if you'd like. And then you can add sensors if you'd like to pair more sensors to the device. And since this is the Eco model, it only comes with the one sensor built in. Um, and this is where, you know, some of the, where the tire hits the road, if you really want to deal with it, you can. But you have the uh, different um, schedules here you can build in if you're really worried about building a schedule for your garage. I'm not overly concerned about that at this point. Um, you can set your comfort settings. So for each scheduled setting for your home away, or asleep, or if you want to add one. Let's say you walk into the shop and you want it to, when it senses somebody home, you want it to go to 65 degrees, you can have it automatically do that. 
Um, again, I'm not going to do that because I'm fine with just saying 45 unless I'm going to be out here for any extended amount of time. You can set reminders in here. Um, I have one set if it's below 45 degrees, it reminds you. It lets you know what's going on because that means something's malfunctioning in the garage here and we're having problems. That's the majority of the features of the Ecobee. There's more into it. You can get online and check out the usage, which I'm looking forward to using. That's one of the reasons why I want to get this, to see how much my um, heater is actually running and then review utility rates and see how it all plays out. Um, but really, again, that's the biggest piece. I want to monitor um, my actual uh, usage. And the other nice part is, is on this home screen, uh, where it's showing my actual temperature and then where it's showing the uh, set temperature on the right there, I can go ahead and adjust the temperature from the house without having to come out here. Yeah, it's not that far away. When it's cold outside, I know I'm gonna work out here. There's no reason to make the track back and forth just to get the shop preheated. So I'm looking forward to using that feature of the Wi-Fi thermostat. So really the two things I'm looking forward to using is being able to set the temperature from the house, come out here and it be warm, I'll monitor remotely, and then um, you know be able to track my usage so I can understand what I'm actually using out here in the shop as it costs me two arms and a leg to run this. So let's go ahead and do some trialing out here and see how this works. So as you can see here, it's currently 56 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up one degree higher. So we're gonna go 57 degrees. All right, you'll see it do that. It will change on the wall as well. And then we'll mention the time it set till. The actual heater reads out 54 degrees. Um, it's a little different than what the actual wall thermostat is saying. And then it actually shows it in low eco mode. So what's nice about that when you go up a degree or two is it's gonna run in eco mode or the eco wear mode, which is running at 5,000 watts instead of 7,500. So using less wattage is less energy consumption. So saving you a little bit more on your energy bill. So running at a degree hotter or two degrees hotter, it stays in low mode. Let's see what happens when we uh, turned up a couple more degrees. So this time we're actually gonna go over here to the wall and adjust it up. So you just grab your total temperature gauge and we're gonna go up to 59 degrees and see what happens. See, so again, it says it's gonna to stick to 59 degrees till 1130 or I change something. You're gonna hear that turn on there and then you will see the heater on the wall flip to high. So again, it's gonna run in the lowest setting possible to get that room the temperature to where you need to be. Um, again, if you wanna be done or you wanna go hotter, you can drag her up even higher and that's fine or we can go down here to 58 degrees again. Or it says the room's 56, we'll go one degree hotter than the room, 57. When it gets to a point where it's stabilized some, it will drop back down to the low range on the thermostat. Likewise, you can do one of two things. You can go into your phone and cancel it. You can set it back to 56 degrees if you want, or you can hit the little X and it's gonna default back to 45 degrees where you had it. Resuming your schedule, turning the heater off, We'll run for a couple more minutes. You'll see the power button blinking on the left. At this point, it's dissipating all the heat out of the element and the fins on the element itself. Getting all the heat out of there, again, trying to utilize as much of that as possible and to help um, add prolonged life to the unit. So when it's done with this, uh, it'll finish its cycle and then we'll shut off and wait for the next call from the thermostat. So you'll see there's plenty of options on how you want to control and adjust the temperature in your garage. I showed you guys before the regular non-Wi-Fi, non-programmable thermostat, and now one of the more high-tech, I guess, more available options you have on the market for Wi-Fi thermostats, the Eco B3. So whether you're controlling it by your phone or by the wall, there's plenty of different features you can control within the heat in your garage. And I really do think it adds a lot of value um, to, I guess, if you're worried about energy efficiency and also convenience. Because like I said, you could be an hour away and you say, oh, I'm gonna be home in an hour. I know it's cold outside. I wanna get the shop heated up and ready to go. Yeah, am I that worried about it? 45 degrees is not that cold and I'm completely fine in just a zip up coat. So being able to do it a little early and get it warmed up, I think it's a little, it's kind of nice. Especially if you know you maybe have your friends over to have a couple of beverages in the shop. Because you know, adult beverages in the shop is like, I don't know, the thing to do here in Iowa. So I definitely think this Ecobee thermostat and this King Electric heater work well together. Um, also, you know, kind of compounds on its eco-friendly uh, nature of the model. Again, like I said, that built-in uh, system helps regulate between high and low using that two-stage thermostat to help um, reduce energy consumption. I'm looking forward in general to just tracking how much this does run and seeing what happens over time and seeing how that really does reflect to my power bill. Because like I told you before, I don't think it's all that expensive to heat this garage. Um, in my opinion, it's better than carrying a bunch of stuff in the house to keep it from freezing. And plus, you know, keeping things at a non-freezing temperature is better on them.
I will also say I am a little interested to see how the Ecobee utilizes the conversation with the power company to help um, reduce its energy consumption. What I mean by that is, is in Iowa, at least in our area, our electrical um, usage is tiered. It's based upon how much you use. And it also is dependent upon the time of day. So supposedly how this is supposed to work is the Ecobee is supposed to communicate back and forth with the utility company and um, say it's 2 p.m. and it's the cheapest rate of the day and the heater knows it has to be to 60 degrees by 5 p.m. It's gonna go ahead and take that cheaper power usage and preheat the building to help you um, save energy by, you know, two cents a kilowatt hour to do that, whatever it may be. So I'm interested to see how the system works together between the eco model of the actual um, heater itself and then the Ecobee thermostat when they go together, what we actually get for power consumption. Because I know, again, with the uh, Eco 2S that I had, um, what the power consumption was extremely, extremely cold. So I'd be curious to see over two years differences, what are we using for power? And is it a combination of, well, is it the thermostat and the heater or is it gonna be the same? I guess we'll see what's gonna happen. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on this. Um, I'll also put some videos above for the various um, videos we've been doing for the install of this heater, um, other models I've been doing. Um, the, the King Electric heaters have been great for me and I really, really think they're worth the cash. Um, yeah, maybe they're a little bit more expensive than Chinese brand, but I, but I think it's definitely worth it. So in this video, we added the Ecobee thermostat and did some testing with it here. You know, again on the phone, one thing's one, you test it on there. It works well. Just make sure you have Wi-Fi because that's the most important thing. And I've got an extender getting me my uh, Wi-Fi signal out here. So thanks again for stopping in. Appreciate you all enjoying me today on the channel, checking out this latest addition to the garage, a little bit of technology with the King Electric Eco 2S Plus. Thanks again for stopping in. My name's Kyle. I'll catch you in the next one.